Hi, in this lesson we're going to be looking at units of measurement. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be converting between units of length and weight and uh, similar things like that. So let's jump into it. Uh, just as a bit of a refresher, I'm going to spend a short amount of time looking at how to multiply and divide by tens. It's a skill that really is essential for this little topic that we're doing, and uh, I think it's worthwhile just making sure we're all on the same page when it comes to this. So I've put together a bit of a simple table and a simple list of uh, what happens when you times and divide one and one million by a certain amount of tens. So when I say tens, I mean a multiple of tens. You've got ten and a hundred and a thousand and a million and backwards over here as well. So if we have one times ten, we, we obviously get ten because it's one ten. And we continue that logic through, it stays the same. But what it's important to note is that when we multiply by a single ten, we have our answer of one and the decimal point moves forward once. So we have to put a zero on the end of our number. So we end up with ten. If we multiply by 100, we need two decimal places to be pushed forward on the 1 to end up with our 100. Because whenever a decimal point jumps a spot that isn't actually there, you need to add in the 0 as the placeholder. And that logic continues through here. Dividing is very similar, it's just the opposite. Uh, when you divide, you need to take decimal places away based on the amount of multiple of 10 that you're multiplying by. So we're here, we're, mul we're divided, sorry, dividing by. Here we're dividing by a million, so that is six decimal places we need to go back. So currently the decimal point is at the end of our million. We move it back six times and we end up with our one. Continue that through, if we divide by only 100, that's only two decimal places we need to go back. And that's why we end up with 10,000. Uh, if we divide by 10, we have one decimal place to get rid of and we end up with 100,000 because we only got rid of one zero doing that. And with a divide by one, that's not a multiple of 10, so we don't actually move the decimal point at all, and the answer stays at a million. So we'll just have a look at a couple of examples with harder numbers than just one. So we've got 1,453,935. We want to divide that by a thousand. So that means currently our decimal point is at the end of this number. Mathematicians are very lazy, so they don't write um, point zero if there's nothing there, because if you don't write it, you assume that there's point zero. Because we're dividing by a thousand, that has, like it's a third multiple of ten, so it's ten times ten times ten, so we need to move this decimal point back three times. So we go get rid of it from there, and we go back one, two, and three. And that means the decimal point now has to go in here. And that becomes our answer. We have one million, well, no longer one million, one thousand four hundred and fifty three point nine three five. And we don't need that zero. That's all there is to it. Have a look at another quick example. We've got 1.85637 times 10,000. So we have a look at how many multiples of 10 we've got, and that means we've got four zeros. So this decimal point needs to move forward one, two, three, four times. And now it goes in there. So that becomes your answer. Instead of one point, you have 18,000. 563.7. Okay, what I've got here are a couple of quick examples that I would like you to try. So pause the video now and give these four questions down here a bit of a whirl. Okay, having a look at these, we've got one million and stuff, and we're dividing by one million. So that's six zeros. The decimal point is at the end of the number, so we've got to go back six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we end up with, I'll just extend this out so we've got enough room, 1.342996. This one here, we've got a quite a large, I should say small decimal number. A lot of zeros in front mean this is a very, very tiny number. And this time we're timesing by a million, so we need to move this decimal point forward six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now it's going to end up in there. We don't need to write all those zeros in front of it again. They don't mean anything. There's no place to hold there. So we just write our answer as 39.5. Okay, next one. This one gets a little tricky. What we've got is we're dividing by 100. So we need to move the decimal point to the left twice. So we're going backwards. So we end up going once. And then we run out. 
So when we run out, we need to add a zero to give us another place to jump back to. And that's where our decimal point goes there. So in this case, our number actually gets even smaller. We end up with 0 0.000184. The last one, 135 times 1,000, the decimal point is at the end here, and we need to move it to the right or forward three times. So we need to add three places for that to decimal point to jump. One, two, three. And we end up with 135,000. So I hope you went alright with those ones. Okay, moving on. We have our <coughs> pardon me, categories of measurement. First off, we're going to be looking at length and converting between kilometers, meters, centimeters, and millimeters. We're going to be looking at mass, converting between tons, kilos, grams, and milligrams. We're going to look at a bit of volume or capacity with kiloliters, liters, and milliliters. And the one out sort of left field is time, with days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So it's important to note the words in front of these here letters. So we've got kilometres, and that's putting a kilo in front of metres. And a kilo means a thousand. So that's how we know how big a kilo is compared to just an ordinary metre. We've got metres and centimetres, so there's a hundred cents in a dollar, a hundred years in a century. So the jump between there requires the gap of 100. And the last one, centimetres to millimetres, is the difference between 100 and 1,000. So that's only one decimal place, so we only times by 10. So there's our conversion there. And it stays the same for capacity, except capacity we don't have centiliters. So we either jump 1,000 from kiloliters to liters, or we jump 1,000 from liters to milliliters. Mass and weight, again, very similar. They've used the same prefixes. Milli means a thousand, so that's the difference of a thousand between milligrams and grams. Kilo is a thousand, and we have things that weigh a lot more than kilos, or kilograms, so we've added in tons to be able to go that large. So we don't say that a building weighs one million, million, million kilograms. We cut it down and say it makes, weighs one million tons. Oh, and we need them going back the other way. And as I said, time is a little on the left field. The difference between days and hours is 24. The difference between hours and minutes is 60. And minutes and seconds is also 60. So what you can do now is pause the video and write these conversion tables down. The idea is that if you need to convert from kilometres to centimetres, you just follow the path and do what it says. So if you go kilometres, you times it by 1,000 to get it in metres and then you times it by 100 to get it in centimetres. So this table works regardless of whether you're just going from one to its neighbour or whether you're going from one all the way to the other end. You just do what it says at each little jump. Now, speaking of jumps, we have another little thing that hopefully will enable you to remember this a lot easier. So if you haven't already, pause the video and get that down. Okay. The little thing to help you try and remember is King Henry's daughter makes delicious chocolate muffins. And the idea behind this is that the letters at the front stand for our metric system. So the K in front of King stands for kilometer, M for meter, C for centimeter, and the other M for muffins for millimeter. And by having these little placeholders as words, it means that to jump between each letter requires a gap of 10. So whether you're going from big measurements down to small ones, you need to times by 10 each new word until you get to the letter that you need. Similarly, going back the other way, you need to divide by 10 at each word jump so that you end up where you need to be. So if you need to convert centimetres, so you're here at chocolate, into metres, you divide by 10 and then divide by another 10 to get you there. And if we look at our table, centimetres to metres, it's divided by 100. So it's the same thing. Hopefully this is a little easier for you to remember, and uh, we're going to give both a go in our examples. The other beautiful thing about this is that it works for kilograms, milligrams, and grams. And it also works for capacity. So it works for kiloliters, liters, and milliliters. You do the same thing. So remember back up here, capacity, the difference between a milliliter and a liter is a thousand. 
So the difference between a milliliter here and a liter means one jump, two jumps, three jumps. So that's three tens or a thousand. So it's the same thing. It's whatever's easiest for you to remember. Okay, heading into a few short examples. We've got 105 kiloliters to liters. So I'm going to use our normal table for this one or the uh, traditional way of doing this. So kiloliters to liters means we multiply by a thousand. So we're going to do that, multiply by a thousand. The decimal point is here. We move it forward once for one of the zeros and it gets it in front of the five. And then we need to add two more zeros on the end because we've still got two more zeros to multiply out from the thousand. So it's important to note that. All right, 25 meters to millimeters. So I'm going to use King Henry's daughter. So we're going from meters to millimeters. So we're going across the top, and it's times one ten, two tens, and three tens. So that ends up being times a thousand. So we do that. The decimal point is at the end of the 25, so we need to add a whole another three zeros to be able to jump those places. Right, five days to seconds. We can't use King Henry because it only works with the metric system. Days to seconds. So we're going from days, so we're going to multiply by 24, then by 60, then by another 60. So times 24 times 60 times 60 gives you 4,432,000 seconds. Okay, 0 0.001 kilograms to milligrams. So we'll have a look at King Henry there for this one. We're going from kilograms at one end all the way to milligrams at the other end. So what we need to do is times by one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, and six tens. So six tens means six zeros, which is a million. So we need to multiply that by one million which gets us to 1,000 milligrams. So we use up three of these zeros, just getting the decimal point in front of the one, and then we need another three zeros on the end, turning it into 1,000 to take care of these three zeros here. Okay, next one, we will use our traditional table, 90 millimeters to centimeters. So millimeters to centimeters means we're dividing by 10, so we're only moving the decimal point back one. So it's here next to the zero, I'm going to move it back in the middle, and we're going to just get 9 centimetres. Okay, 2,150 metres to kilometres. We use King Henry. So metres is here, and we're going to kilometres. So it's time to divide 110, 210, and 310. So there's three words in there. So we need to divide by 1,000, which ends up giving us 0.25 kilometres. The zero is current, I mean, the decimal point's currently here next to the zero. Dividing by a thousand means we move it back one, two, three times, putting it in front of the two. All right, couple left. 800 grams to kilograms. We're going to need to divide by a thousand. Um, we got the smaller measurement and we're going into a bigger one, so we expect a smaller number, so that's how we know to divide. We've got 17 million milligrams to kilograms, so we're going from extremely small measurement into an extremely large measurement. And having a look at uh, King Henry, milligrams is all the way over here and kilograms is all the way up here. So we know that there is one, two, three, four, five, six jumps. So we need to do divide by six zeros or one million, giving us 17 kilograms. The last one, we need to use our more traditional table because King Henry doesn't cater for time. And it's 144,000 seconds to hours. So we're going from seconds to minutes, so we divide by 60, and then we divide by another 60 to turn our minutes into hours. So we do that, divide by two 60s, gives us 40 hours. Okay, thanks for your time, and good luck with the work.